Before we get into the video, I just want to say if there is a certain deck that you guys want to take a look at or go back and reference, there will be timestamps at the bottom. I think in the description is where I'll try to put those or in the comment section. They'll be down there wherever. But yeah, if there's a certain deck at any point in the video you guys want to go take a look at, just go down there and reference that. Thanks for watching. Psst. Hey. Hey, you. No, idiot. The other guy in the room. Yes, you. Let me ask you a question. Are you tired of playing with Pokemon B all the time? Has the game felt very stale and repetitive over the last few years? Are you tired of giving up two prize cards every single time one of your Pokemon gets knocked out? Do you have PTSD from the god awful format that ADP was in? Are you glad that hunk of crap never got to actually shine at Worlds? Are you getting tired? of getting bossed turn two, giving up two prize cards, and basically losing the game because Pokemon has no idea how to make a proper format anymore? Do you miss actually having to knock out six Pokemon to win a game? Do you realize I'm a voice in your head and you are going insane because you've been sitting here for the last three hours trying to figure out what deck to build? Yeah. Hi, buddy. Well, I'm gonna actually encourage you to make a video right now for your wonderful viewers at home where you're going to show off a bunch of single price decks that they can play and that are fairly cheap to make aside from cram rant because for some reason you have to have a damn charizard in it all right enjoy the video what's going on guys you're watching epic pokemon tcg and in today's video guys what i got for you i'm going to be showing you several one price attacker deck lists so i'm not going to go into super duper detail on each of these decks mostly because a few of them have actually been out for so long but if you're just wanting another option from Pokemon V or you're wanting to try to find something a little more on the budget side or if you're new to the game and one of these decks might have caught your eye, well, then I think this is a really good starting point because I feel like all these decks are a really good solid starting point um, if you're just wanting to pick it up and try it out. So the first deck that I'm going to cover is going to be Reggie. Um, so this deck has been out for a very long time, so I don't have to go into a lot of detail here. Um, so I'm just going to kind of give like a basic rundown of the strategy of the deck how they all work and uh give you guys like you know pretty much pointers on like why the cards are in there so obviously we're going to start off by taking a look at reggie gigas this is going to be the focal point of the entire deck has the ability ancient wisdom and essentially as long as you have reg rock reg ice reg steel reg lecky and reg drago in play you may attach up to three energy cards from your discard pile to one of your pokemon so this deck is completely geared towards just pretty much getting all your Reggies out, discarding your energy, and then you have a pretty good array of energy to get out, uh, such as Gift Energy, which is pretty much Lucky Egg in the form of an energy. So whenever one of your Reggies goes down, you draw until you have seven cards in your hand, and then from there you pretty much just have like a fresh hand to kind of work with to try to rebuild your board. Uh, we also run Aurora Energy. We're going to be running four of those. Uh, so you pretty much have to discard a card from your hand, which is perfect because you can throw one of those energies that you can attach with Regigigas' ability back to one of your Reggie Pokemon. And then, of course, it provides all energy. And if you guys take a look at our Reggie line, we, we need pretty much every single bit of energy that we can get. Including Energy Lotto, which is going to help us search for those. I meant to do that. <laughs> uh, but we also run Capture Energy just to let us get our uh, Reggies out a little quicker. Uh, we do run Regilecki, so which means we can use Speed Energy attached, and we get two extra cards. And then we're going to round out with Twin Energy, which is absolutely perfect on our Reggie Gigas. So yeah, the deck is very, very straightforward. You're trying to dump energy into the discard pile, attach them with Reggie Gigas's ability once you have all your Reggies out, and then you have things like Reggie Rock, which is really good against Pokemon with Fighting Weakness. Uh, Regilecki is really good against Pokemon that has uh, Electric Weakness. Um, there is another Regilecki that snipes for 120, but with the popularity of Manaphy, uh, it has kind of fallen off, and I feel like this is the better option. Um, Reg Ice is really good if you're running against Fire Pokemon. It also has a attack here, which means your, po your opponent's Pokemon V can't attack, uh, which is really nice. It's a defending Pokemon, so it is going to have to force them to have a switching card to, uh, you know, just opt out of it. Uh, Hisuian Heavy Ball is going to help you grab one of your uh, one of your Regis out of the uh, prize cards. And if you guys look, we have two of every single Reggie because we really need to try to get them out as soon as possible. And we need to really make sure that if one surprise, we don't just auto lose. Um, the cool thing about this deck is that it got an introduction to Thornton. 
Uh, so Thornton is going to open up a lot more plays with this deck. Uh, choose a basic Pokemon in your discard pile and switch it with one of your basic Pokemon in play. Any attached cards, damage counter, special conditions, turns in play, and any other effects remain on the new Pokemon. So if you pretty much don't have a way to get your Reggie out of the discard pile, even though we do run three Ordinary Rod, um, Thornton is here as an option to just basically play down a Reggie, you play Thornton, and then from there you just kind of swap them out, so then that means you have your Reggies back on board. So which means for some reason, let's say you're playing against Arceus, uh, or you're playing against uh, Zorark or something like that, something that has that fighting weakness. You're like, alright, Giga Impact, your Reggie Rock goes down, and you're like, crap, I don't have a way to get my Reggie Rock down, but I do have a second Reggie Steel. Well, you guys kind of get the idea. Throw down Reggie Steel, play Thornton, swap him out, and then from there you just Ancient Wisdom back to your Reggie Rock and keep attacking. Uh, we also run some damage modifiers here, like Choice Belt, obviously, is going to be the big one here. Um, I said modifiers like I have more than one. <laughs> Um, but we also run Path of the Peak. Obviously, we're not playing any Pokemon V, so shutting down your opponent's uh, Pokemon V's abilities or just roll box Pokemon in general is really nice. Um, boss's orders to drag some stuff up. Guys, the deck is very straightforward, and it has been out for a very long time now, and it started off as kind of like a meme deck, but uh, just recently it sprung back up in popularity, and it is a very solid choice, very budget-friendly as well, and I think is a good deck if you're wanting to get into it. Plus, if you like the Regis like I do, um, it's definitely a good option. All right, so I probably should have mentioned it in the introduction, but I am going to be covering new decks from Lost Origin. That is the beauty of this video is Lost Origin introduced uh, some new one prize attacking decks into the format that are actually very viable. Uh, and I figured I would follow it up, you know, the Reggie deck with something a little more gimmicky, something a little more fun and annoying if you guys are just wanting something kind of casual and fun to play. Uh, in the other room are like a few week old kittens are beating the living crap out of each other. I hope you guys can't hear one of them screaming. I'm going to have to go in there and check on them here in a minute. <laughs> uh, so this deck is going to be pretty much centered around Trevenant with the Elder Tree Barrier ability. If this Pokemon is knocked out by damage from an attack of your Pokemon's Pokemon B, your opponent can't take any prize cards for it. So essentially what you're trying to do, if you're running up against another one prize attacker deck, this isn't going to be as fun. But if you're running against those Pokemon V, uh, this can get funny pretty quickly. I I've enjoyed playing this. Uh, it has Giga Impact for 150, which is really nice. Uh, during your next turn, this Pokemon can't attack. It only has 120 HP, so it's going to be getting knocked out. But whenever it does get knocked out, if they use a Pokemon V, they're not going to take any prize cards for it. So then from there, what you do is you have cards like Clara, which allow you to do two abilities, which is you put two, uh, two Pokemon from your discard pile into your hand, or you can grab two basic energy cards from your discard pile and put them in your hand. So we partner this up with cards like Cherim, which allow us to basically spam Grass Energy down, uh, the barrel to kind of dig through our deck and draw some extra cards. So we pretty much just need to try to make sure that every single turn we have two Phantom down. So whenever our Trevenant does go down, we can Clara for a Trevenant, two energy, and then evolve and use Cherim's ability to throw those energy back on there and just kind of continue this endless cycle. We also have Palpat in here as well to shuffle our Clara back into the deck, which is really nice. Um, and then we have Manaphy for some bench protections. So that way our opponent doesn't just try to hit stuff on our bench to get around our ability. Uh, training Court's really nice as well because, of course, Trevenant takes three energy and Clara is only going to be getting you two energy back. So this will give you your third energy, essentially, which is really, really nice. Um, we also run, let's see, gosh, what else can I really go over? I mean, the deck's very straightforward, guys. We run Gormandize, Snorlax, in case you need to get a little extra setup at the start of your turn here. Um, scoop Up Net, that could be very helpful in some situations. Uh, we run, of course, the generic Pokemon Research, Marnie, and, you know, all that good jizz jazz. But, guys, this deck is pretty much meant to spam Trevenant and just deny your opponent from ever taking a prize card. So, that that is the breakdown of this deck. Like, that is literally all you do. Your Trevenant goes down, you promote a Phantom, you Clara, and then you just use Cherim, throw those energies back down, do another 150, and then just pass it back to your opponent, and you just pretty much drive them insane. Um, so that's that's what you do with this deck, guys. The Trevenant, it's kind of a gimmicky deck, but if you get it going and you hit the right matchup, it is a pretty powerful deck. All right, so I'm sure that this could easily be updated uh, with Lost Origin, but I figured I would go ahead and show you guys this deck as well. Uh, this is going to be the Ditto Magikarp deck. Yes, I know, there is a Crobat. I know. <laughs> uh, Crobat's pretty cheap, though. But 
Um, this is a deck that pretty much you just dump all of your uh, Magikarp and Gyarados into the discard pile, and then you're going to be using Raging Fin, which does 10 and then 30 more for each Magikarp and Gyarados in your discard pile. And with Ditto's Sudden Transformation, you can use the attacks of any basic Pokemon in your discard pile, uh, except for Pokemon with a rule box. So you can use those attacks. So pretty much you can dump all eight of these in there. And then from there, what you can do is you can uh, just max out on damage. Uh, so this deck definitely needs to be updated a little bit. Um, obviously, Hisui and Heavy Ball is a huge card that really needs to go into this deck. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and show you this real quick here. Uh, I actually haven't touched this deck in a little while. I did not mean to add it. I was actually just trying to do this. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is a card definitely you can throw at least one or two up into the deck, and it probably would be pretty good. Um, I just haven't updated it because I've been trying to test other stuff out from Lost Origin. Uh, but yeah, guys, the, the strategy for this deck, man, is you are just trying to dump Magikarp, Gyarados, and then you have, of course, Choice Belt, Double Turbo, and Twin Energy, so that way you can just keep attacking with your Ditto here, um, and then just kind of go from there, guys. Like This deck is so straightforward that it's not even funny. I've covered this deck, and yeah, it, it's, it's very fun. Like... When you think about it, Magikarp and Ditto as like a you know combined team, you're like that doesn't seem that good. But this deck can crank out some numbers, and it's actually pretty awesome. Um, of course, we also run Manaphy in here as well to protect our bench, and then we run Shinchino, which is really nice because Make Do will let us discard our Gyarados or our Magikarp, uh, and then draw an additional two cards. Uh, along with that, we have Quick Ball in here to help discard those. Uh, we have Ultra Ball, we have Trekking Shoes, and then we have Pokey Stop, which is fantastic for this deck. It's so good because if you can hit uh, Magikarp and Gyarados, uh, even if it's just one, and then get two item cards, that is very, very clutch. Um, we also run Rescue Carrier, so that way you can get your Dittos back, get your Shinchino line back. Um, that's really nice as well. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much the deck, guys. Uh, two Zinnies Resolve. Um, you discard two cards from your hand, and then you draw for each of your opponent's Pokemon in play. So you guys can see, you're just all about discarding cards, getting that Ditto fired up. Crobat's in here to help you draw some additional cards. Um, you can cut that card if you want to just play straight up pure one prize attacking. Uh, but yeah, that that's Magic Card, man. It's it's a very strong deck, very fun to play, um, and definitely one of my favorites in recent memory. All right, so the next one we're going to be taking a look at is obviously a deck that. Pretty much was immediately played as soon as these cards dropped because people saw how good it was. And that is going to be Lunatone Soul Rock. So we're going to take a look at Lunatone here first. It has Moon Kinesis. It does 30 and then 30 more damage for each Psychic Energy attached to this Pokemon. And how do you get those Psychic Energies attached to Lunatone? You are going to be using your Soul Rock with Sun Energy, which allows you to, once during your turn, attach a Psychic Energy card from one of, from your discard file to one of your Lunatones. Excuse me. Um, so we run cards like Scoop Up Ned in here. We run uh, Pokey Stop to get our items back. And basically, we're, we're just trying our best to throw Psychic Energy into the discard pile. And then we're trying to spam Soul Rock so that way we can charge up our Lunatones. Uh, we run four Battle VIB Pass because we really want to try to get our Pokemon out as fast as we can. Uh, we also run Radiant Greninja, which is beautiful because you can discard one of those Psychic Energies you can attach from your discard pile and then draw two cards, which is really, really good. Um, we also run Manaphy. You're going to see Manaphy pretty much in all of these decks just because Wave Bell is such a strong ability. Um, we also are going to be playing Pokestop, kind of like with Magikarp and Gyarados. Um, if you're hitting Psychic Energies, that's really, really good. Um, on top of that, just all the item cards in this deck play a very, very vital role with this deck, so getting them to your hand faster is really, really good. Uh, we run one Cynthia's Ambition. Uh, just whenever your Lunatone, which only has 90 HP, goes down, you can refresh your hand with eight cards, and so you can kind of rebuild your board back up. Uh, we run three Boss's Orders along with four Professor's Research. And then for our damage modifier, of course, three Choice Belt. And that is really it, guys. We run a Hisuian Heavy Ball just in case one of our Soul Rocks or maybe our Greninja or a Manaphy might be prized. Uh, we also play two quick ball, which can discard some cards here. And then we run four level ball, which can grab everything out of the deck except Radiant Greninja. And then Trekking Shoes. Um, pretty much, you look at the top card of your deck. And pretty much most of the time, if it's a psychic energy, you're going to discard it. Um, but this is just a good way to kind of dig through your deck and get some more cards to your hand. So yeah, that that's pretty much the breakdown of this deck. You're just loading energy into the discard pile. 
just like Reggie Gigas, and then you're going to throw them on your Lunatone, and Lunatone is only giving up one prize, but it can hit for a pretty decent amount of damage, so that way you can kind of trade with your opponent efficiently. Um, and that that is it, man. This deck's been around for a hot minute. It's definitely one of the more popular uh, one-prize attacking decks. All right. I don't recommend playing this, but I wanted to show it anyway. Cleavor. Uh, one of the decks that I love and hate at the same time. I love this deck to death, but man, oh man, does it drive me insane. <laughs> um, I built mine uh, probably not the best you can uh, because there is a Cleavor, I think, that has Route, if I'm not mistaken. Let's take a look at it here. Yes, yeah, so Route could be in there just for some solid damage in case you need to clean up or something like that. Um, but what I did for this deck was I straight up just went for the flipping attack, which Timberclee flip two coins. If both of them are heads, your opponent's active Pokemon is knocked out. And we're going to partner that up with Glimwood Tangle. Um, so this deck has actually been a nightmare. Uh, but at the same time, I just find myself going back to it. I've actually thought about buying this deck in real life just to have it always on hand. Um, <laughs> but... This deck is pretty much just centered around trying to flip those heads, get two of them, and then knocking out your opponent's Pokemon. Uh, we run Zorark in here with Phantom Transformation, which allows you to swap out Zorark with a Stage 1 Pokemon uh, from your discard pile. So you can grab Cleavor, or if you need to, you can also grab the Barrel, which is really nice. Um, so this essentially on paper will give you six Cleavor right here. Uh, but we also run one Ordinary Rod just in case we need to get something back. Again, Mana Fee's in this deck because it is so powerful. Uh, we run two Gormandai Snorlax just so that way we can draw so we have seven cards and kind of refresh our hand and get something going for the next turn. Uh, we run a Roseanne's Backup. This is really, really good in this deck because it gets you a Pokemon, a Tool, Stadium, and an Energy card. So we can grab one of our special Energy cards, we can grab a Pokemon back, and then we can grab a Tool back. We can grab this very vital Stadium with it, which Glenwood Tangle, once during each player's turn, after that player flips any coins for an attack, they may ignore all results of those flip coins and begin flipping those coins again. So this essentially just lets you reflip your head, or yeah, reflip your coins to try to get those heads on Cleavor's attack. Uh, we run a couple energy lotto just so that way we can dig these energy out of our deck. Blunder policy, you're gonna flip tails a lot with this deck unless you're just, well, okay, well I'm one of the most unlucky guys in the world. <laughs> um, so this deck obviously is a nightmare. Uh, but whenever you flip Tails, uh, you draw three cards, so at least if one of your Cleavor go down or gets knocked out, whatever might happen, you'll at least have three extra cards in your hand to work with for the following turn. And that that is the deck, guys. I, I've covered this deck, I've featured this deck on my channel a couple times, and I hate it, but at the same time, I just I can't stop playing it. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Well, this deck just doesn't seem like it wants to die. Uh, we are going to be looking at Durant with Devour. This is the only attack you're ever going to be doing with this deck. Um, if you're using any other attack, I, I, something's going on. But for each of your Durant in play, dis or discard the top card of your opponent's deck. So, you're going to be getting four Durant down and then just milling four cards every single turn. And we have ways to kind of screw with your opponent to make sure that they can't retreat, they can't attack they can't do anything that is the idea behind this deck so while well actually hang on i take that back that statement earlier you are going to be using one other attack pardon me we'll get to that here in just a second but uh, essentially what you're going to be doing with this deck is you're just going to be trying to stall out your opponent you're going to be playing all these super annoying cards making your opponent wish that they didn't ever play pokemon and yeah, Dur Durant is a nightmare, especially when the list is consistent. So we're going to take a look at some of the cards in here that are going to really screw with your opponent. We're going to start off with that other attack I, I probably just completely forgot about. But even tall, that art is so, so good. Look at it. It's beautiful. Cry of Destruction. Discard up to three special energy from your opponent's Pokemon. You're not going to be able to use this in every matchup, but whenever you do need this attack, this can really set your opponent back. Um, just hitting three energy uh, is very strong. It can definitely uh, just mess up your opponent's plays. And so that's why that's in here is just Cry of Destruction to get rid of those special energy. Um, other than that, Devour is going to be the go-to attack. So now we're going to take a look at all these really annoying cards. I have no idea where to start. I guess we'll start with Crushing Hammer. That is Echoing Horn. Uh, Crushing Hammer, flip a coin to Pez, discard an energy from one of your opponent's Pokemon. So along with Evital, we also have Crushing Hammer in here to kind of disrupt your opponent's Pokemon. Uh, we will get to Echoing Horn here in just a second. Uh, Team Yellow Horn, both active Pokemon are now confused, so that way you can kind of stall out your opponent, make them flip 
heads if they want to attack you. Uh, Pokemon Catcher, uh, flip a coins, and then if it's heads, bring it up one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Uh, partner that up with Galar Mine, which increases the retreat cost of both active Pokemon by two more. Uh, we also have Boss to drag up your opponent's Pokemon. Uh, we have Echoing Horn. If there's something in your opponent's discard pile that you know they can attack with, you can Echoing Horn. Put it back onto the bench, drag it up, and then just kind of stall out while you sit there and devour your opponent's deck. Okay, that was actually really, really well worded. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? So, we have Hisuian Heavy Ball. Obviously, we really need to make sure we have all four Durant. We can't let any of them be prized. But we also have some backup in the form of Fiona. I think that's how you say your name. Put up the three prize cards into your hand. Then, for each prize card you put in your hand in this way, put a card from your hand face down as a prize card. So, if you are getting dominated because, well, your Durants are prized, you can grab up to three cards. So, you can grab either a Durant or two, if depending on how many of those are prized, or you can just take a look and see what's in your prize cards, or you can get some of these annoying cards that are going to make your opponent want to pull their freaking hair out. Uh, we also run four Gloria in here. Just let you grab your deck, or grab your deck. Wow, that sounded bad. <laughs> let you to search your deck for up to three basic Pokemon. Jesus Christ. I shouldn't do these videos after like I just woke up. Uh, so you get to search your deck for three basic Pokemon, and then uh, put them on your bench. So you can grab your Shinchino, you can grab your Manaphy, you can grab your Durance, obviously. Uh, we do run Bird Keeper. You never know when you might need to switch and then draw some additional cards. This also paired up with uh, Team Yellhorn, which is really nice. Or is it? Oh, it's just Yellhorn, not Team Yellhorn. I guess that works too. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Marnie can be a disruption card. Uh, just kind of lower their hand size down a little bit. Um, but the the deck is, you, you just devour, man. You just devour. You play these extra cards that can screw with your opponent's setup. Uh, we run double turbo and twin energy. Double turbo is not going to be affected in the slightest with this deck because obviously you're not doing damage. Um, but that is the the gist of it, man. You have rescue carrier to get your Durant's back. Level ball can search out pretty much everything except the Eva's Hall in this deck. Um, scoop up net. You just never know when you might need to scoop something up. Uh, gore, of course, goes with Yellhorn. Yeah, that that is it, man. You're just you're devouring. That's that's all you're doing. <laughs> I thought I would go ahead and change it up here and go back to one of these brand new Lost Origin decks. So this one we're going to be taking a look at is going to be Cramorant or Lost Box, whatever one you want to call it. And we're going to start this by taking a look at Cramorant with Lost Provisions. If you have four or more cards in the Lost Zone, ignore all energy to use this Pokemon's attacks basically. So if you have four cards in the Lost Zone, which is very easy to do, you get to do 110 for free. Uh, we also run some cards in here that can amp up that damage, like Articuno with Ice Symbol. Your basic water Pokemon's attacks, except any Articuno, do 10 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. This could help you kind of hit some good numbers along with Choice Belt, um, just kind of amping up that damage. If you have, let's say, two Articuno, that's going to be 130, and then Choice Belt be 160. Uh, so that's nothing to laugh at. 160 for free is really good. We also run uh, Sableye here as well with Lost Mine for one Psychic Energy. Uh, you can only use this attack if you have 10 or more cards in the Lost Zone. Put 12 damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon any way you like. So if you just kind of sit there and chip away with Cramorant, you can really finish off your opponent's Pokemon with Sableye. Have like a multi-prize turn. Uh, we also run a Radiant Charizard in here. Late game, this is really good. On top of that, this is just good in general because it is a 250 damage attack. That will be pretty much lowering its energy cost with Excited Heart for each prize card your opponent's taken. Uh, we also are going to have... Let's see where's it at where's it at yeah comfy there we go it's right next to charizard <laughs> comfy has flower selecting once during your turn if this pokemon isn't in the active spot you may look at the top two cards of your deck put one of them in your hand and put the other one in the lost zone so this is really going to be how you start plowing those cards into your deck uh, and this is pretty much kind of built to where you just start spamming comfy like every turn you're going to be able to spam comfy get cards to your hand and then just kind of get your lost zone built up so that way you can dig for those certain cards you need and then different situations are going to call for different attackers. Um, this deck is really, really strong. Um, and again, Manaphy, because Manaphy needs to be in everything. <laughs> um, yeah, Confei is going to help you really with your setup. We also have uh, Coerce's Experiment. You look at the top five cards of your deck, put three of them into your hand, put the other ones on the Lost Zone. Uh, switch Car, Scoop Up Net, Escape Rope, <laughs> uh, Air Balloon, all ways that you can kind of spam Confei. Uh, that, that is what you're wanting to do with this deck. 
Uh, we also run four Poke Gear, uh, just that way we can get our Colorus Experiment to our hand or our Marnie, which we run two of. Uh, Fog Crystal is really good. It can help you search out your Psychic Energy, your Confei, or your Sableye, whatever the situation might call for. Uh, we also run four Battle VIP Pass. So the cool thing about this card is that, one, it helps you set up. But later in the game, obviously, because you can only use it during your first turn, uh, when you hit this card with Colorus's Experiment, that is a easy, super duper freaking easy selection right there for you. You're like, well, I don't need this card anymore, so I'm just going to throw this away and look at my other cards. You don't even have to think about it, which is really good. Uh, same with Confei. Uh, if you have this card, you're just like, nope, lost some. Like, I don't need it. Uh, we run Hisuian Heavy Ball. Uh, you never know what a situation might call up. You know, hey, my Charizard's prized, or hey, my Manaphy's prized. Something might happen, and you can just kind of get one of those out of the prize cards. Quick Ball is going to help you search everything out of the deck. And we have a 2-2 split of Fire and Psychic Energy. So, what you're wanting to do with this deck, like I said, spam Confei, get those cards on the Lost Zone, start attacking with Cramorant. We have Sableye here for, you know, just to finish off some Pokemon. And then Charizard is just kind of hanging out, you know, waiting in the deck just saying come on take those prize cards because i'm going to come out with a freaking vengeance here in a second uh and if you want to run uh ordinary rod in here which i actually think would be a very solid idea um i can't believe i forgot that uh, <laughs> uh you can run ordinary rods that way you can actually use your charizard again which would be really good um as for what you can cut man that's that's completely up to you uh, I can't believe I forgot about Ordinary Rod. That is a very good idea for this deck. Wow. All right, yeah. So I'm probably going to be making that adjustment after this. Um, yeah, so you can pretty much, with Ordinary Rod, get your Charizard twice. So 250 damage, possibly 280 is nothing to laugh at. So this deck is really good. Um, this actually kind of overtook a lot of people's expectations for Giratina because they're like, oh, you know what? Instead of Giratina, let's just play this. Which which is weird. Don't get me wrong because Giratina is really strong. I've been testing it. It's... Really good, but man, this this deck is so much fun to play. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, okay, I know. I know Weirdier gives up two prize cards, but hear me out. Let me let me break the deck down first. So the next one we're gonna be taking a look at is gonna be Clefairy. So Clefairy has Moon Watching Party. Once during your turn, if this Pokemon is in the active spot. For each of your bench Clefairy, you may search your deck for a Psychic Energy card and attach it to that Clefairy, then shuffle your deck. So, if you just load your field with four Clefairy, and you just start switching and throwing Psychic Energies on them, uh, you are obviously you're setting up Wonderstorm, which does 20 for each Psychic Energy attached to all your Pokemon. Nothing to laugh at, because that can crank out some pretty good damage. Uh, but you're also thinning your deck out, and you're setting up Weird Ear. Now, before you get mad, Weird Ear is super... Super cheap. I'm not even joking. I think they're like less than a dollar a piece. Um, I'm pretty sure. Right now as I'm recording this video. But Weird Ear has Frontier Road. Once during your turn when this Pokemon moves from your bench to the active spot, you may move any amount of energy from your other Pokemon to it. And then it has Psy Shield Bash for 40 times each energy attached to this Pokemon. So the idea here is to pretty much use your Clefairy's ability, send up Weird Ear, move the energy to it, and then attack your opponent's Pokemon for massive amounts of damage. And on top of that, you can use Clefairy as a secondary attacker if you really want to. Yes, I know I said this is supposed to be a one prize attacker video, but with how cheap this deck is, I figured it would be dumb to not mention Clefairy because Clefairies are super cheap, Weird Ear is super cheap. Altogether, I think the most expensive card in this deck, guys, might be the battle VIP pass, which you run four of, so that way you can start loading up your field with Clefairy. So, this deck has a lot of similarities, sort of, to the Lunatone Soul Rock, except the energy acceleration is a little different. Um, instead of grabbing them from the discard pile, Clefairy is grabbing them from the deck. Uh, we also run Energy Recycler as well, uh, so that way we do have those targets we can attach the energies uh, to those Clefairies from our deck, uh, because obviously. These Pokemon are very fragile, so whenever you lose one, you're probably losing at least three energy. Um, this energy recycle is just going to throw them back in there. Uh, so the switching cards for this deck are as followed. We have two switch, four switch cart, and then we also have air balloon. So this is going to be how you're going to be kind of, you know, rotating out your Clefairy, so that way you can just keep using your ability. Um, Weird Ear is going to be there. So the last one you want to send up is probably going to be your... Clefairy with the air balloon. So that way you can air balloon out, send up your weird ear, load up the energy, and attack. 
uh, we run Hisuian Heavy Ball, two of them, because this is a very vital card for this deck. When you have a Clefairy prized, or even two of them, you'll be able to tell as far as how well your deck's working. And so two Hisuian Heavy Ball is really solid. And along with that, one Ordinary Rod, I considered bumping it to two. Um, Pokey Stop is really good. Uh, again, kind of with the Lunatone Soul Rock, you can hit energy. Uh, but those item cards that are in your deck, very, very, very vital. So that way you want them in your hand. Um, run Boss's Orders, obviously, because we want to be dragging up those Pokemon. Uh, if we're attacking with Weirdir, which we've run three of, um, we're going to be wanting to one-shot as soon as possible because Weirdir only runs or only has 220, and most decks run Pokemon that can do that no problem. Uh, but we do run 10 Psychic Energies. Obviously, we're going to have enough um, you know, targets with the uh, Clefairy ability. Uh, and then, of course, Manaphy. Manaphy is an OG. Okay? Manaphy is going to be in every deck. <laughs> every deck featured in this, in this video. Uh, but then our supporter line for Marnie, for Professor's Research, super generic. Um, but yeah, that is Clefairy, man. You're, you're just wanting to use Moon Watching Party, load up those Clefairy, send up Weirder, or if you want to attack with Clefairy, you can. Uh, it's really up to you, but I, I think this deck's really fun. Very, very cheap, too. Up next, we got the beautiful, amazing Dugong. I got four of them laying over there right now because I like this deck so much. Now, even though Flow is not spelled right, it has the attack flow return. So shuffle any amount of water energy card from your Pokemon into your deck and this attack does 40 damage for each card you shuffled into your deck this way. But it also has swim freely and you're gonna see why that is relevant because we run two Finneon with Oceanic Accompaniment. Accompaniment. Akuna Matata. Anyway, as often as you like during your turn, I apparently can't say that word, Jesus. As often as you like during your turn, you may attach a water energy card from your hand to one of your Pokemon and has the Swim Freely attack. So, you guys are already seeing the idea here. You have Dugong, throw a bunch of energy on it, you do Flow Return, and, and you just like, you know, destroy your opponent's Pokemon. So that's the idea there. We're going to go into it a little more in depth because we have to talk about some of the cards that are in here. First one being Manaphy. Search your deck for up to four basic energy cards, reveal them, put them in your hand, and you shuffle your deck. So that right there is 4, 8, 12, 16, 160 damage right there with one woman. You gotta have a strong woman by your side. And then on top of that, as you guys are gonna be kind of figuring out, as the turn goes on, you're gonna be lowering a bunch of cards, so your hand size is gonna start to dwindle. So you're just going to be kind of going, well, okay, I grabbed too many cards, but you're going to be going from this to about this, and then maybe even this. That is where the barrel comes in. The barrel is quite honestly, and you can argue that, of course, Finneon is a little more of this, but the barrel, hands down, is the heart and soul of this deck. The barrel is going to be how this deck kind of keeps functioning, because obviously you're going to have turns where you have to play your supporter to grab four energy cards, and then that's it. That's all you're going to be able to do. So that's where the barrel's going to come in with industrious and scissors, incisors, whatever you want to say. Once during your turn, you may draw until you have five cards in your hand. So on paper, what you're going to be doing is lowering your hand size down with all these energy. And then from there, you're going to be attacking with dugong, sending them back into your deck. So what you're wanting to probably do is have multiple barrel on the field. Your turn should ideally, or your field ideally, should look like a seal, a dugong, or two dugong, a finneon, and then you want to have the rest probably the barrel. Because once you start really going into the game, your deck is pretty much just going to turn into water energy. There, there will be some other stuff in there, but for the most part, it's just going to be water energy. So once you start drawing those energy, use Oceanic Accompaniment, whatever the frick that word is, and you're going to throw them onto your Dugong and start attacking. We also have some other cards that help you add cards to your hand, Water Energy, I mean. Uh, four Capacious Bucket, and then Arita, Arita, however you want to say her name, is really strong because you can search your deck for a Water Pokemon and an Item card and put it in your hand. So that means you can grab your Dugong and a Capacious Bucket, um, you can grab Evolution Incense, whatever you might need for the turn. And then we also run two Ordinary Rod, because if they boss up your Finneon and knock it out, we need a way to get that back, along with Dugong only having 120 HP. We really need a way to get those Pokemon back into the deck. 
Um, we also run two Snorlax with Gormandize just to kind of set up our, our field uh, for the next turn. Um, and yeah, that's that's really it, man. Like, you, there's not a lot going on with this deck. You're just loading up Dugong with Oceanic, this word, and then using Flow, which is misspelled, returned. So that's, that's all you're doing. And then, like I said, Bebarrel is going to be helping you spam cards to your hand uh, and really refreshing that because obviously if you have Finneon and you have a bunch of cards in your hand and they're all water energy and you throw them on there and you don't have any hand at all, uh, you need something to kind of keep your deck going. But yeah. So that's Dugong. Probably my favorite deck out of Lost Origin, uh, as far as like the one prize attacker goes. It, it's super, super fun. God, this deck's awesome. So there's a lot going on with this deck. I'm gonna try my best to kind of go over everything, but just know there's 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 a lot going on here. All right, so the next deck is gonna be Arcanine. I really wish I had the character arts. I don't think I have four of those. Hang on. I think I only have two. Yeah, I only have two. That's the character arc. Looks pretty sexy, right? All right, so Arcanine has an attack called Very Vulnerable. If you have no cards in your hand, this attack does 150 more damage. So it's a free attack. If you've never seen a symbol before, it's a free attack. You don't have to attach any energy to it. You guys notice we have no energy. If you go to save this deck, it says your deck does not contain any energy cards. Do you want to save it? That is the idea behind this deck is you're going to be using free attacks. So that's really cool. And how you do this is you play a bunch of cards out of your hand until you have nothing left in your hand. And then you're getting a free 160. Really strong or 190. So how we're going to be doing that is we pretty much have a bunch of cards in our, in our deck that we can just play to get them out of our hand. Uh, of course, we have Crushing Hammer. Uh, if we're not going to have energy, our opponent's not going to have energy either. Flip a coin if heads, discarding energy for one of your opponent's Pokemon. Uh, we also have four Evolution Incense. We can just play these to play these. Uh, we also run Hisuian Heavy Ball. We run Level Ball, Quick Ball. That's another card we can use. We run Ultra Ball, and then we run Ball Guy, which, Jesus. Uh, search your deck for three different iron cards that have the word Ball in their name. Reveal them and put them in your hand. This could be a way for you to just load up your hand with a bunch of balls. Mm. <laughs> And then play them all out so you have no hand. Uh, we also have a couple supporting Pokemon in here that assist with some things as well. The first one being Radiant Venusaur. So this is going to be your Radiant Pokemon of the deck. Obviously, when you pass it over to your opponent, you're not going to have any cards in your hand. You're kind of in a bad situation if your Arcanine goes down because from there you kind of go into top deck mode. Well, Radiant Venusaur takes you out of top deck mode being the best OG starter Pokemon evolution. I said it. Suck me. Has Sunny Bloom, once at the end of your turn, after you attack, you may use this ability. Draw until you have four cards in your hand. So you're not going to be using Pollen Hazard, but you're going to be having this in here for the Sunny Bloom effect. So you pass it over to your opponent. You have no hand whatsoever. Well, Sunny Bloom kicks in, and now you have four cards to work with for your next turn. That's really good. Because trust me, going in the top deck mode sucks. It sucks, it sucks, it sucks. All right, just just hear me out on that. Uh, along with that, we I'm gonna take I'm gonna show you guys Altaria first, just to kind of help this out a little bit. So Altaria has Tempting Tune. Once during your turn, you may search your deck for a supporter card, reveal it, shuffle your deck, then put that card on top of it. So we also play a Rangaroo with Primate Wisdom, which allows you to switch a card from your hand with the top card of your deck. So there's a little combo there. But we also are going to be playing three Peony. Discard your hand, then search your deck for up to two trainer cards, reveal them and put them in your hand, then shuffle your deck. So you pretty much with this card, what you're going to do is, even if you just have it in your hand, but I'm going to give you guys the Altaria scenario. The Altaria for the Peony. It's on top of your deck. You take a card from your hand, put it on top of your deck with a Ranger, and then switch. Now you have the Peony. So from there, you play the Peony, discard your whole hand, and you search your deck for two cards that you can play right there. So that way you can lower your hand size down to zero so Arcanine can use its attack. Peony is a very, very, very obvious choice for this deck because it's really good, has great synergy with Arcanine, and allows you to grab any two trainer cards out of your deck that you might need. However, Arcanine is not the only Pokemon that we're going to have in this deck kind of assisting us here. We also have Mightyena. If 
you guys want to see my Diana without the character art, I'm going to go ahead and hook you guys up with that. I just used it because it looks cool. So this is what my Diana no normally just looks like. So that's really good. This is pretty much going to be in here for the Mew matchup, or if you just have VMAX Pokemon in general you're facing off against. If your opponent has any Pokemon VMAX in play, this Pokemon's attacks cost 3 less. Well, Wild Tackle costs 3 energy. So my Diana can attack for free just like Arcanine. So if you're running against those Pokemon VMAX, what you can do is just send up Mighty Anna. We do run a 4-4 Zorark. We looked at this earlier. It has Phantom Transformation, which allows you to swap Zorark out with a Pokemon in your discard pile that is also a Stage 1. So if you are running against a Mew deck, you pretty much have the means to just spam the field with Mighty Anna. So that's why we run a 1-of in here. And that's also why we have a Weird Barrel line. We have a 1-2 line. Why would we not have a 2-2 line? Well, with the barrel it being a stage one, we have Phantom Transformation. Same goes with Altaria. We don't have to have Swab Blue, but having Swab Blue is very helpful. But yes, we can Phantom Transformation for our Barrel, for our Altaria, for our Mighty Inna, and for our Arcanine. We also are going to be running this Hisuian Growlithe because it has the de defensive posture. Flip a coin if it has during your opponent's next turn, prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks. Also, a free energy. You never know if you're in a bind, you can maybe flip a coin to heads, forcing your opponent to have a boss or some other ways to get around that. In Manaphy. Uh, just to protect our bench. Uh, we also are going to be playing Grant, just lets us do 30 extra damage uh, with our fighting Pokemon, so our Arcanine. And then, one, or during your turn, if Grant is in your discard pile, you may discard two cards, except any Grant, from your hand if you do put this Grant in your hand. So there we go, guys. Bam, more synergy. Discarding two cards. If we're able to just kind of lower our hand size down to two cards, we still have our supporter for the turn. Use the effect. Play the grant. Now we have no cards in hand. Arcanine's hitting harder. If Venusaur is on the field, that means we can have four extra cards drawn as soon as we attack. This deck has a lot going on, but really the general breakdown of it is you're just trying to lower your hand size down and attack with Arcanine, and then there's other options if you're running against Pokemon VMAX. Um, this deck is really creative. Um, it's definitely probably going to give a bad player like me a headache, but I'm sure you as the viewer are way better than me, and you guys can pilot this deck no problem. Um, this definitely was a deck that I really wanted to cover just because it's really cool that there's so much going on and that there's a lot of options with this deck. And to be honest, if there's another Stage 1 Pokemon that you really like that really catches your eye, uh, that you can somehow fit into this deck um, you can definitely go for it but for the most part i think the best partners for this deck are going to be altaria money and a barrel and then of course we have radiant being store sunny bloom uh, to assist us just to getting cards in our hand all right guys that is going to do it for the video hopefully this did help you one of the decks that i actually did not mention i guess i should say deck tight is those amazing rare decks that are going around using the Lost World system. I don't have any of those on Pokemon TCG Online, and I don't even know where to begin to start making those. <laughs> um, so those are definitely options out there. Um, but yeah, hopefully this video helped you. I mean, there are definitely a lot of viable options now in the Pokemon TCG uh, regarding cards that aren't Pokemon V. Um, and so hopefully that kind of keeps going in the future. I really like that there is definitely a lot of options now uh, as far as that goes. But... If you guys did enjoy the video, please make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed, and obviously every single one of these decks that I featured in this video can be very, very easily changed up, so that way it can kind of work for you the best, whatever play style you want to do. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for tuning into the video, especially if you made it to this point of the video. Um, I'll have some more content for you guys soon. Take care. I love you all. And this is Epic Pokemon TCG, signing out. Don't forget to like, follow, and obey.